Good afternoon. Welcome to the Theotrade Afternoon Video. I am Blake Young. Today is August 31st, 2023, and we're going to look at the SPY as a possible double head and shoulders. Now, head and shoulders patterns are one of many price patterns that people look at. Price patterns are technical analysis focusing on just the price and key resistance and support areas or the price patterns that's created from those peaks and valleys or support and resistance. But price patterns and technical analysis are oftentimes dismissed by managerial finance people, by economists, by the Federal Reserve. In fact, the Federal Reserve is primarily an economist group or a fundamental or financial ratios group, and they look at just the underlying data that drives business and drives the economy. But even they could not get around the fact that the price pattern, the head and shoulders price pattern specifically, is a legitimate way to find profitability. If we go over and look directly at their website, going to the Federal Reserve Bank of New York, you'll see in 1995, they wrote an article or did a research study on head and shoulders, and they called it head and shoulders, not just a flaky pattern. Now, certainly they were dismissing all price patterns by calling it a, not just a flaky pattern, but they went through and replicated in real time data after doing back testing for over 20 years. They went through and looked at all the different types of head and shoulders patterns. They used a computer algorithm to do it. They did 10,000 simulated series, and they came to the conclusion that it worked, that it created profitability over time with the head and shoulders pattern. So, so even the Federal Reserve, who is not generally going to favor technical analysis, admits in a very detailed study of 10,000 plus events that head and shoulders patterns work. So when we see a head and shoulders pattern, we should pay very close attention to it. And part of the reason why the head and shoulders pattern works so well is because it is, in essence, creating a Dow theory trend reversal. And so you have a shoulder, a head, and a shoulder, and that is creating a set of higher highs followed by lower highs, higher lows, and when it breaks through the neckline, followed by lower lows. So it becomes a full trend reversal from Dow theory principles. Same thing on an inverse head and shoulders or head and shoulders bottom, you're creating lows, lower lows, higher lows, and when it breaks through what they call the neckline, that is a full trend reversal. So when we're looking at these, we're looking at the setups, that's what we're watching for. The head and shoulders pattern tells us that we have a legitimate Dow theory trend reversal. If we look at the SPY, we're looking for the same kind of pattern going on through here. Is it giving us higher highs, higher lows, followed by lower highs, lower lows, confirming the head and shoulders? Is it giving us a true reversal? And is it giving us a head and shoulders? Now, some people will tell you that the double head and shoulders doesn't exist, and I'm not gonna get into the discussion of whether we should count it or not count it. The fact is, highs and lows, support and resistance still exists. The idea of a double head and shoulders is that you've made a shoulder and a second shoulder, a high, and possibly, in this case, a lower high, creating the head and shoulders normally, and then created the second shoulder. So we're kind of creating a second shoulder. And whether you want to use that as the indication or whether you want to use all of this as one big shoulder, you can absolutely say, look, we're going to count all of this as one shoulder and all of this as one shoulder and ignore the middle price. The reality is, it still sets us up for the reversal. The nice thing about the double head and shoulders or that second shoulder, left shoulder, right shoulder, is that it creates a bigger pattern, a bigger target for the setup. And if memory serves me, the estimation is that head and shoulders patterns reach their full target in a reversal almost 70% of the time, which would mean this head and shoulders pattern would be from the top of the head at 459, and if we drew a trend line or a line across the bottom of these shoulders, then the distance when we break through the neckline, which is going to be maybe 439, we're looking for about a 20-point drop. Now, that's 5%. 5% through the neckline, 5% through the breakout level. Now, if we clear out the chart and anchor it a little more specifically, we kind of dig into this and go from the high close at 4 five or if a high open there four five nine straight down the best i can to the neckline 
And yes, we broke through it and retested it right through there. So I like that as a test of support. And we don't know where we're going to break through, but we certainly know it's not going to happen today. So we'll move it somewhere here in the future. If this is the breakout level, the target becomes about 410. 410 takes us all the way back to the May and April sideways movement of the market. If we want to look at this, the breakout is the required setup for a head and shoulders pattern. For any price pattern, you do have to finish creating the pattern. You have to break through the support or resistance to confirm the pattern and to be able to see it run to the next target. If you're going to be a little more speculative, you'd be watching for it to roll over here and look at that as an early entry for lower risk, but lower probability because it has not completed the pattern. It needs to drop down to this level. And if it does, and it breaks out, say at 437, then again, we're looking for about a 5%, it's actually a 6% move down to the target. If we're going to short early, if we say, as soon as we get a bearish close, if we roll over, if I short the top of the right shoulder, that is not truly a head and shoulders pattern yet. It has to get down here. But what it could do is if we roll over, you have lower dollar risk and lower probability. And a short somewhere in here near 450, if it rolls over and then breaks through, you could add to the position both of which would still give you a target expecting it to go down to 410. Now we're talking about a 40 point move, about 9%. Now that 9% from the right shoulder is obviously much more opportunistic, but it is lower probability. If we measure the distance from the very high shadow down to that target of the head and shoulders, now we're talking about a drop of about 10.7%. That is going into a corrective wave for the SPY. As you're looking at head and shoulders, the study was done as being a reversal targeting the size of the head and shoulders pattern. Again, whether you want to say this is two shoulders on each side or if you want to just call it all one shoulder, it doesn't really matter here. But as we're looking at that move, if we are rolling over and we're seeing this go lower to its target, be aware that the head and shoulders is defined as a reversal pattern. It doesn't mean that it's going to stop at this target. It means it's reversing the trend. Now, before I go look at some other indexes, I do want to highlight you could, we'll just duplicate this and move it up slightly. You could look at this low right through here and possibly define the neckline a little bit flatter, but it's still going to give you roughly the same breakout level. So whether you said, no, I want to use that as my left shoulder, this is my right shoulder, still almost identical to the same price levels at, for the breakout, because it'll all be right here, somewhere near about 437, 435. Now there's going to be multiple catalysts that could reverse the equity rally, that could turn this into a bearish, head and shoulders pattern that is calling the top in the market and a, and a downward trend. One of those, probably the strongest one of those, is the dollar. Now the dollar index is going to be highly influenced by interest rates. We saw that PCE, personal consumption expenditure today, came in at a little bit hotter than what we would like. So we're still seeing inflation in play. And so people are wondering if we're going to raise rates further and strengthen the dollar and weaken equities. But even here, you can see a similar type of pattern whether you want to call this an inverse pattern, a weakening US dollar, we created the left shoulder here, the head upside down, the right shoulder through here. And if this is the setup that we're looking at, then if we break through this neckline, then we will see this inverse head and shoulders mean the dollar strength pushing back up to its previous resistance levels as well. And a strong dollar or a strengthening U.S. dollar generally and historically has indicated a weakening equity market. So let's draw a line right across the top. This is more horizontal in this scenario, but it's the same concept, the same idea that if we are reversing the trend, we are going from lower highs, lower lows. And if this is our new higher low, today's bounce, and we break through the neckline here, then we're going into higher highs, higher lows. And if the dollar breaks through here, the measurement we'd take from the close prices would be looking for a move potentially all the way up to 108. Now the percentage move from where we're at without waiting for the breakout up to that level is about a 5% move. Generally speaking, if the dollar gains 
1%. Equities indexes like the SPY lose 2 to 2.5% 2 per percent. If we're talking about a 5% move up in the US dollar, not only are we going to see the pullback about 6%, but we could see this go to 10% to 12.5%. Now we're talking about that 10% reversal falling back to the recent lows and likely going into a corrective wave. Now the dollar strengthening, as we just said, would be conditional on higher rates, rising rates. And you can see we're already in an uptrend. We're making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. And I wouldn't see this as a head and shoulders pattern yet. In fact, we could bounce here and get all the way up into this 435 area before creating another right shoulder if we're going to see the reversal in equity or in treasury yields. Otherwise, we're still just in an uptrend. Higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows. We have not created the lower high yet to see a reversal in treasury yields. So treasury yields rising will support the idea that the US dollar is going to get stronger, will support the idea that the S&P will go lower. The Russell, or in this case, the IWM, the ETF, is doing a similar pattern, but we're not creating a second shoulder as much here. We're kind of creating the first shoulder. This could be our left shoulder. This could be the head. This could be the right shoulder, which means confirmation would be a break through this neckline. Now, break through that neckline. Let's measure this out from the high close best we can straight down and then look for the breakout. If we break out, then the Russell the IWM could drop down to 167, which takes us back all the way back to test the six-month lows and to approach 12-month lows, and certainly through the lowest price for the year to date. The Russell is setting up for a bigger drop, at least as far as the setup is concerned, on this being a potential head and shoulders. One more time, going back to the idea of a head and shoulders versus a double head and shoulders, don't worry about the semantics as far as whether there's two shoulders or one shoulder. Head and shoulders is a head and shoulders. A double top is a double top. A triple top is a triple top. All we're looking at is whether you call it one thing or the other is a break of resistance, a break of support, and Dow theory lower highs, lower lows for a downtrend, and Dow theory higher highs and higher lows for an uptrend. If we set this up and we break down, we're going to see the Russell fall towards its target at 167 from the short-term highs, not the highs earlier in the year, but just from the short-term highs, that's a 15 to 16% correction from the immediate rollover that we're getting possibly today. This sets us up before waiting for the neckline break for a 11% drop and puts us, puts us back in line with market correction. Now, these are the things to watch for from a technical perspective. Be aware that if you wait for the break through that support level, break through that neckline, then at those levels you have a higher probability, but you're not going to see the high profitability as far as the dollar amounts for the risks that you put on by waiting, but you improve your probability. If you want to or are willing to give up probability for a better price, then you could look for opportunities to take a short or bearish position on a candlestick pattern rolling over and candlestick patterns are nothing more than shorter term price patterns. So watch for a short term price pattern that could feed into the head and shoulders, the head and shoulders that could feed into the market correction down 10 to 11 percent that could feed into a longer term downtrend. This is where we're set up and this is what we're looking at. Well that's going to do it for me today. Have a great day. We'll look forward to talking to you again next week.